my favorite tool to use is the butterfly and to position it on both the put side and the call side. And so let's, let's anticipate what that might mean. Let's say that in the next 60 days, we see a big move, but we have no idea which way it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Assuming we do not have underlying stock and we're just playing the ranges of, hey, this might really roll over or this might really break out. How would we look at that? And so the beauty of the butterfly is that it creates opportunities that are low risk and high reward. Now, the flip side is that when we just look at a butterfly, if you have ever used a butterfly where it's you buy a call that is somewhere, sometimes it's at the money, sometimes it's out of the money, and then you sell two calls below it at higher levels, and then you buy another one. So the but it's called a butterfly because the center is fat. It's got two sold calls and the wings are on the other side. And so what you want to do, if you buy a butterfly, you want to make money on the move where, let's say it's a call, on the move upward. And so Boeing is a great example of this because back in October, right after earnings and um, just after the shenanigans and all of the terrible things happening across the pond, I said, hey, let's position that we see Boeing either get to the top of the range or the bottom of the range. Now, why would we think the bottom of the range? Well, if all of a sudden a bomb goes off somewhere, everyone is going to sell everything for just a few days, maybe even hours, but things could go very nasty. And so we positioned on both sides. Now, when you look at a butterfly and you design what you're looking at in general, here is the easiest way to do it. And I'm going to delete all of the uh, levels. And there's a lot of them there. <laughs> you, you like to mark up your charts. I do mark up my <laughs> charts quite a bit. So um, when we take a look at this, this is a monthly formation. And so what we can see are that traders really came in and bought the 115 to 120 area very hard. It double bottomed here in the middle of 2022 towards the end of 2022. And it's really been running and it's created another region right at about 189 and then a top end at about 140, right? So my eyeballs are uh, telling two, me- 240? You mean? Excuse me. Thank yeah. you. 240. Um, you were so testing my, to see if I was paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> my eyeballs are telling me, hey, this chart is sitting in a very wide range. Now we could say, wait a second, is this some sort of base that might be forming up that's a little bit higher that says, all right, I'm going to recover. So the answer is yes. We're thinking, hey, it could be like that. It's making higher lows. But if we have something else happening, we could see it drift well to the bottom of the range. And so once our eyeballs say, okay, this is my floor, this is my ceiling, then we think to ourselves, all right, what's going to happen in 60, 90 days, right? So at the end of October or the beginning of October, we said, you know, this is a good place. It's got a bounce action event. It could either fall to the floorboard, I don't know, it could, or it could move up into the top of the range. And so we did position that. And the call side, let's see if this can work this way. 
The call side of these was the 220, 230, 240 formation. And when we bought it, we paid something like 27, no, 37 cents for this position. So we literally could sell it outright and not have anything to worry about and could have made the profit. But the, the way I like to use this butterfly is to say, all right, we have until January. It moved into the direction that we were looking for. Either here was the downside one and here's the upside one. These were actually both in January. Pardon me for that. Right. And so as we're looking at this, we can say, OK, what do I want to wait for in case there's either more upside or it moves back into the range? Now, I'm of the mind that it's going to move back into the range. So what I will do is sell the long call that's sitting there. And if I sell the long call. Where are the chains? So which, which which strike? I'm going to sell the 220, 230. Okay. I'm going to yeah. sell the whole spread. Yes, I'm okay. going to sell the 220 and buy the 230. Mm -hmm. That's going to give me $7.55 of profit. Now, you might say, but Anne-Marie, that says 236, which means the other short 230 is still in the money. That's why if I was selling the whole thing, it would only be a buck 73. But this call side is saying 755. So before I do that, I want to see the chart break down. I know that it's likely coming and it's so deep in the money right now that if it pulls back just a few pennies, or it pulls back all the way to $6 over the next few days slash weeks, whatever, my credit is not going to shift very much at all. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to give me a very nice base. So when I close this out, I now have $10 of risk sitting right here, but I've collected $8 of it. Mm -hmm. So at the most, I have this plus how much I paid for it initially as all the risk I have sitting in there. Now, what happens beautifully, we did this with um, Eli Lilly. We did this with Lilly earlier in the year. We uh, did a put spread, a put butterfly. It went deep into the money. We sold it, and then we watched the other side expire because – I think Lily has something like 87% institutional ownership, maybe even mm. higher than that. And so that big dip right there, you know, they're going to come out and go, uh, I think we probably ought to buy some of that. And right. so it was a fairly good um, setup that allowed us to buy that dip and feel comfortable with it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's really and, what and, and what time period were you doing that Lily trade? Um, we did that. I would have to look at the chart because it only gave us one shot at that dip. I think it what, was. was this the most recent dip to the 50 day moving average line? Yes, after the summer. Okay, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, very, very nice. It was really, um, it was. Truly an outstanding trade. And we all we thought was, okay, let's have reversion to the mean. Let's have it come back to the breakout level. And then Bob's your uncle. We're out of there. Not waiting for any rotation because we know it's got a ton of institutional ownership. We don't want to be short anything like that for anything more than a snap trade. Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of times when I think of the butterfly spread, and, and again, this is um, for, for those of you that aren't as familiar with options um you know there's there's definitely a lot to kind of parse out here but if, if, if you think about the butterfly i always think of the risk graph and how it's as you as you mentioned you've got your wings that kind of tell you hey you're covered on the downside defined risk it's a defined risk trade so you're not going to lose you know more than you 
you know, you're not going to be surprised. You know, it's like right. you know what you're getting into, and the the, the max risk is the max risk. Um, but it always has that pointy look, like what you're showing yeah. on your chart. It has that, you know. So in this case, you know, two thirty is where you get your max profit. And yes. a lot of people are like, well, gosh, how how likely am I to nail it two thirty on the expiration date? And they feel like oh, maybe I shouldn't do this because I'm just not that good. But what you're saying is there's a lot of ways to play with this. You don't need it to finish at 2.30 on the expiration. You're talking about a trade that you can do well before the expiration. Absolutely. Kind of, yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's why a lot of people look at these uh, probability graphs or the risk graphs and they go, well, that looks terrible. And then the second thing they think is, I really don't. I don't think I know how to navigate through that. And so the big thing to recognize is that you allow price to drive your decisions. And so the price of the stock. Yes. Mean, yes. The price yeah. of the stock to drive your decision. So I did not expect Boeing to run so far so fast. And when it runs really far, really fast, it's sort of the same thing like a calendar spread. All of a sudden, you've made a, a fair bit of money, and it's not anywhere near the expiration. And you go, well, what do I do? Well, being the simpleton that I am, my answer is always take the money yeah. and run. And so when you take a profit like that, a, a lot of times we go, I'm going to try and wait for this peak or I'm going to do X, Y, or Z. And really what you want to do is just let the stock breathe and move. Allow it, because you're choosing strikes that are known areas of support and resistance, you just let the traders come into that support and resistance and then go, okay, what are they doing here? And so you would look at it at the end of the trading day. So when it hit 2.30, I had an alert go off. And so I looked at the chart and I went, well, you got a bunch of higher lows, higher highs. So I definitely do not want to take this position off yet, because if I take it off, I'm going to be naked, not naked, but I'm going to have the short spread that's going to expose me to risk. I don't want to do that. And so I wait and that's what I've been doing. And as look at how long I've been waiting, I've been waiting since the middle of last week. And here we are into the next week and it's still rising. But here's what I notice over here to the left. One, two, three. It took four weeks for that to stabilize and choose to come in. So I'm going to anticipate that I have the same sort of thing happening. And as it does that, perhaps it'll weaken and come right into this 230, as I suspect it will. And then I'm going to close the long call spread. And I'm going to watch that short call spread because now I have almost $8 of profit. See, I've got a ton of wiggle room. I'm not going to get up and go, oh, right, because I have a lot of room. And so I'm going to watch it. But what I'm waiting for is for the traders who participated here to tell me I'm done. And that's when we move with the butterfly. Mm -hmm. And so to be clear, when you're when you're choosing your strikes, because, mm -hmm. again, you, you laid out, you know, the ranges that were of importance to you, you know, that 240 high, mm -hmm. very critical um, you know, a, a support level. So does that become your outside edges? And then, yes. um, do you just, your, 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 your middle strike is just exactly in the middle of those two areas or, um, do you ever shift one way or the other? Do like an unbalanced, uh, I do. butterfly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I so do. Maybe talk about the situations in which you would do that, where you might favor one side over the other in terms of where you do your, um, where you do your two uh, two options. Okay. So here is, um, here's the general short answer for that. Option premium is very, very important to me. And I love a deal. So I'm going to go hunting for the mispriced option. 
that gets a little tricky to describe. Okay. But at the end of the day, if you look at your levels and you say, okay, I'm going to say, first of all, this is my old breakout zone, 220. So if the stock is weak and I'm wrong, because remember I was down here, it was like 180, 185, and we were looking up at the 220 because it was going to be very cheap because it was so far out of the money. And so I looked at that and I said, all right, that's going to be my baseline. 240 is going to be the top end because I have a tendency to underestimate the power of a move that's in progress. If I had it in hindsight, hindsight I might have said, you know, why not just take the 230, 240, 250? But I thought, holy smokes, that's $70 away. That's insane. It's right. Gonna move that. right. And it did. Right. And so these moves, um, sometimes I underestimate the power of a move. And so that's really what's happening with this butterfly. It's really into the maximum profit area and moving a little bit over that edge. And so if I stare it down and I go, do I want this to be balanced or unbalanced? It might be that the front options are very likely to go at, to the money, right? My 220, 230, mm -hmm. and I have a good amount, but let's say the 240 on the end is very expensive. And I think to myself, it's not gonna go there. And I'd like to make the option a little cheaper, the butterfly a little cheaper. I'm gonna buy the 245. And so it'll be an unbalanced butterfly because I can see, hey, you know, I don't think it's gonna break out over the center of this linear regression channel because it's been, heavens, um, June of 2021, the last time it hit that channel. Okay. So I'm going to think to myself, hey, I could probably go really out of the money there and make things really cheap on my butterfly. But remember the pull and tug in the market. More risk, more reward. Yeah. Less risk, less reward. And so these butterflies have very low probabilities of expiring at the point. Yeah. And because we know that, we're not going to choose that as our decision. We're mm -hmm. not going to hold it to expiration. We're going to say, let me manipulate the options and say, all right, I'm just going to close the call side and I'm going to take, I know I could have made $800 on this, but I'm going to take $500 mm -hmm. and I'm going to be okay with that. 